Uh, I'll look. I'll be the first person to applaud the Packers, Russ Ball, and Brian Gutekinds for the excellent job they did managing the cap this offseason and really bringing back together a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and do whatever it takes to try and squeeze one more Super Bowl out of Aaron Rodgers' MVP Hall of Fame career. But I have to ask the question, at what cost? I believe that this offseason could very well have cost the Packers their future. What's packing, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the What's Packing Sports Show. I'm your host, Guy Child, the first of his name. And today I'm going to be giving you my three biggest takeaways from the Green Bay Packers offseason, furious offseason, where we saw a lot of players get some new money. We saw a couple of household names move on to other teams. And we know that we have Aaron Rodgers for at least two more yeah so let's get right into it man and the first takeaway for me was the packers really show that they are all in and i know that's a term that we throw around a lot especially in sports and that's the thing that we've kind of cr been critical of the Green Bay Packers for the, for the last decade plus you can say maybe two three decades really going back to Brett Favre's uh time here in Green Bay is that this team has always been very cautious and conservative and they never really take super, super big risk and go all in and just and just do be almost be reckless. I mean, because to be honest with you, the Packers, you can say you can you could classify their actions as being confident and, you know, being aggressive and assertive. And you can also uh, classify it as reckless and irresponsible because, I mean, yeah, you get a lot of cap relief this year, but two, three years down the road. All of those cap number, cap figures are going to double and be bigger and bigger and bigger. But look, man, I give the credit where credit is due. It's it's crazy. It, it has to pay off with the Super Bowl f in order for it to be worth it. And if it doesn't, it's going to be detrimental, I think, to the future of the franchise. But look, I give them credit. I applaud them for moving mountains and working their magic and getting it done. My second takeaway is that this team could actually p potentially be better. I know that might sound crazy because we lost Devontae Adams, and some people are going to say Zadarius Smith and MVS and all the things that we lost on offense. But if you're looking at this from a perspective of a team aspect and not necessarily individual players, but I think the team got better because from a team perspective, what benefits this team, especially offensively, is to not force the ball to one guy. And now all you have is Lazard. I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring in a free agency in the second kind of um the second tier, third tier guys, and maybe like a Landry. I think a I think Landry could really end up in Green Bay. Um you bring him in, you have a Lazard, you go draft a stud in the first round. Now that you have two picks um in the first round. Um and you, and you pretty much just rebrand. I keep saying this, and I'm going to keep pounding this home. This is not a root tooling. This is not a freaking rebuild. This is a rebrand for the Green Bay Packers right now. And they're going to be – I just hope that – I believe that if they just focus on running the football, man, and they focus on playing – physical games, playing good defense. I think this team is going to be okay without Devontae Adams. And I, like I said, I think, honestly, they can be more effective and more efficient. We saw how they performed when Devontae Adams missed games over the past three seasons. The floor has been great, great game plans, great execution, running the ball, everybody getting the ball spread around. I mean, maybe with Devontae Adams gone, this would be the time for Aaron Jones. You know what I'm saying? And so my, you know, one other, my second takeaway is that this offense – with a rebrand could be better. Maybe not more passing numbers for Aaron Rodgers, but just more yards, more touchdowns, more efficiency, more first downs, more better in the red zone. You know what I'm saying? Just longer drives, more time of possession. It's just a better brand of football for me, the way the Packers are set up now than where they have been in the last three years. Plus, like I said, the last three years didn't get it done. So it's time for a change. And I hope I hope the Packers on the same page that I'm on. And let's hope that the Aaron Rodgers will, you know, now be back to spreading the ball around like he was early on in his career. And my third takeaway is that the Packers, by adding all of these 
void years to the contracts of Adrian Amos and Kenny Clark and David Bakhtiari. I mean, even Aaron Rodgers has a couple of void years on his contracts that was added in 25 and 26. All these void years on these contracts, it, it was great for this year. But like I said, in 24, 25, 26, there's going to be a lot of money that the Green Bay Packers owe. And it's creating multiple voids. It's it's a void contract year, and the void contract year is creating this void in the future for the Green Bay Packers. And I'm just I'm just uncertain about what Aaron Rodgers' future is with the team and what the organization's future is after Aaron Rodgers. I thought this contract was gonna bring some clarity. It's gonna bring some some finality. But to me, when you look at it, it actually raises more questions than it provides answers answers because you know Aaron Rodgers basically if he if he decides to retire in 2024 the Packers will be on the hook for 68 million dollars in dead cap so i don't know it seems like is it a two year deal is it a one year one year deal is it a four is it really four years and they're going to just rework the extension again in, in in two more years and give him more money 60 million dollars a year it's like I, i'm just i'm uncertain about that and then i'm also just disappointed in like the whole jordan love thing is like what did you really draft him for was it just for him to be kind of i don't even know he was he just basically a uh, a kick in the butt for Aaron Rodgers, you know, something to motivate him. I mean, that, that kind of sucks. I mean, but I mean, it kind of sucks that you didn't get a real opportunity to play in NFL for your first five years. But at the same time, you made $25 million and did absolutely nothing. So it's like, I mean, I don't know, man. It's kind of a win, win, maybe a lose win. I have no idea. And I got to give a grade. I got to grade this Packers offseason. Look, man, I'm going to give it an A. I'm going to give it a solid A. Bring back uh, Razul and they bring back Campbell. Honestly, you know, whatever is just below an A+, plus, that's what I would get at Packers for their offseason. I mean, just making all kinds of great moves, bringing the gang all back together. And uh, look, man, uh, until the next show, um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, though. What would you grade the Packers offseason moves? What do you think about the new direction of this team offensively, what it could say now that we have to sort of re-envision, re-imagine, rebrand this offensive unit. And, like, you know, give me so, – do you, how do you feel about Gutekunst, man? I feel like he's not getting enough love. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell me what you think, feel about Gutekunst in the comments, man. And uh, to the next show, you know what it is. Go Pack Go. And remember, the Bears still suck. Peace. Mm -hmm.